Hello Daisies, my name is Lori, and today we're going to do the requirements for badge number one of mechanical engineering called the Board Game Design Challenge. So today we're going to discover ways that engineers and scientists and artists design, make, and test new ideas for cars, computers, toys, and board games. For this badge, you are the engineer of your very own board game. Words I'd like you to think about as we're working today are inventors. Inventors are people who think of and build new products and things, like you are going to invent your own board game today. Engineers do the same thing. So inventors and engineers can be a lot alike. Engineers are people who like to learn how to design things and build things that people will use, like computers or roads or cars or board games. The other word I'd like you to think about and we'll be talking about is brainstorming. This is where people come together, or you can do it by yourself, and think of all the possible new ideas and solutions to how you want your board game to look, how you want to play it, what what do you want the characters in your board game to do? So I think of brainstorming as the storm in your brain when you have lots of ideas on how to do stuff. So you're pulling good ideas, ideas you may not like as much, but you just are pulling all your ideas together. The features of your game will be parts of your game that are designed to make them do what you want them to do. And as an engineer, engineers like to make features like windshield wipers on cars that will get snow and rain off the car. So that's a feature of that car. The main feature is that the car is going to get you from your home to the grocery store or to school. That's the main feature. But the other features that it has are really important too. If you don't have all of, we're going to talk about supplies, if you don't have all of these around your house, that's okay because Girl Scouts are resourceful, right? So we are going to just look around the house and see what we can find. We're going to think about what other board games might have in them. So things I want you to think about getting together from your house are piece of cardboard or stiff board like this. Does it have to be square? No. I have an old place mat that's kind of a hard board and I flipped it over and I put paper on it. I can still use it again, but I can draw my game on here and then take the paper off if I need to or just leave it. And you'll notice this is bigger and it's more like a rectangle than a square. You get to decide the size and the shape of your board game. And we have, you may need, if you have a ruler, you may need some pencils and colored pens and whatever you have in the way of art supplies, you might want to pick those up, go around your house and find, find all of those things. You will need some scissors and ask your parents first, but collect some catalogs or maybe old books that are torn or your brother or sister scribbled in that you don't want anymore. You can use those too to cut out pieces and features. Remember features are parts of the game that make them unique. So what is your board game gonna look like? You will also need Go around and pick up some toys or things that you can use for game pieces. Like in Monopoly, you have cars and things like that. We're going to use little toys. So go around and find what you, what you can. Legos work great. Games, think about games. They could be a sport like soccer. They could be video games. Or they can be a board game like the ones we're gonna make today. Have you ever played a game, board game like tic-tac-toe? or Candyland, Shoots and Ladders, or Monopoly. Board games are especially fun and easy to invent because all you need 
is your imagination and the things you already have in your house. You don't need electricity, you don't need Wi-Fi, which is pretty cool. You could even take it, if you had a small enough game board, you, could, you might even take it camping or in your car. Popular games that were invented by women, board games, are Monopoly. Have you ever played Quirkle or Jenga? Those are all games invented by women. So maybe the game you invent today could be the next game that a lot of people want to play. Wouldn't that be fun? So let's get started, Daisy Engineers. So the first step we're gonna do is brainstorm. Remember we talked about storming your brain with lots of ideas. What's your favorite board game? Board games can be about anything. If you could design a board game, what would it be? You can use ideas from books or movies or your favorite sport. Create a story and where you think your game will take place. Use your imagination to get lots of fun ideas. No ideas are wrong. That's what brainstorming is. You just pull in and think about all the things you can think about. And then you can decide what to take and use and what to, eh, maybe not this time, maybe not for this board game. You could also ask others for ideas. Scientists and engineers do that a lot. Almost always some part of their invention was already invented by somebody else and they are building better things based on other people's inventions too. So we need each other's ideas. So we're gonna design your model. What features, remember we talked about features? What will your model look like? What will the playing board look like? Is it a castle? Is it a forest? Is it a uh, soccer field? You decide what you want the theme and the features. The theme is how the setting that you're going to put on your game board and the features that it will have. Is it going to have water? Is it gonna have rocks? Is it gonna have a soccer fields with goals? You get to decide. The other thing you might wanna think about is what game pieces are you gonna use? I found a couple of ants. I don't know if I'm gonna use them or not, but I, I collected them anyway. And I also found some little figure birds. So you can go find little toys, find, make Legos. If you have Legos, you can make any kind of game piece you want. So I'm sure that you have lots of possibilities to use as the game pieces that are going to go around your board. Now, you need to think about that. How are the players going to move their pieces around the board. What kinds of instructions are you going to give to this ant as he travels around the board so that he can win? She can win. In most cases, players take turns. They can roll a dice or they can pick a card or use a spinner. Have you ever seen a spinner? Which is, I'll show you mine, my very crude Spinner. I just cut out, I wanted to see how to design it because I didn't know. And so I put numbers on a circle and then I used a, a little paper clip, stretched it out and used it as a spinner. It works, it's not beautiful, it's not great, but it was what I call a prototype, what engineers call a prototype. It is the first model of your ideas. Not the final one necessarily, but it's the first one. So we are going to make a spinner like that, as well as our, what our board's gonna look like, our players, and what the, how do you win the game, how you win the game. Step three, we are going to draw a plan of your model. So I've decided, what I, I think would be fun to do, I like to fish and I like ponds and I like to look at the animals around ponds. So I thought when I ran around my house, I didn't realize how many turtle figures I have. I have big turtles, little turtles, 
I have lots of different figures. So I decided, let me, let me see what this might look like. Maybe I have a big pond in the center and I have rocks around the outside and I have a starting point and maybe I need to put an ending point on there. An end. And maybe, so that, remember, this is just a sketch of what I'm thinking about. You can draw lots of sketches. It doesn't have to be just one. So as you draw, you'll think about other ways you can do it. So I'm thinking I might put a bridge across there too. And why am I putting these circles? You've played board games before, so you know that you, if your figure, if your, your game piece starts here at start, and you take your beautiful spinner and it gives you, you spin it and it says you get to go one step. That'll be step one. So you only get to go to one, the first rock in my game where you're a turtle. So gather all the things in your house that you think you might need to make this work for you. And I think it's kind of fun to, maybe not now, but later, be sure to name your game because that makes it extra fun too. So I've got a model here. And so this is the water. I'm just scribbling because this is not my final copy. It's a prototype, meaning that it's a draft or it's a just practice for your game. So I just scribbled in, that's where the water is. And that's a bridge that goes over and these are all little rocks. So I'm thinking, I've got a turtle here. He's one of my game pieces. I've got some other turtles around here. But it doesn't have to be turtles. It could be something, it could be a bird. It could be a squirrel. I've got lots of options. So how will I play this game? Hmm, let me think. I've got my spinner. So if the players, if all my players, let's just take two for right now. Little turtle and a big turtle. If all of my players each take a turn, so little turtle is gonna take the first turn, and the spinner lands on two. One, oops, one, two, so he lands there. And what happens? Maybe he gets to eat a fish, a little fish, or find a bug. So I might want to cut out bugs and fishes and put them in the pond. So when he lands here and there's a picture on this spot of a fish, my beautiful fish here, you can see it, but I, that's a fish. So when he landed on that, he gets A worm or a fish, fish that's in the water, or something that's in the water. So for each of these steps, each of these rocks, you may have something that you want your game piece to do when it lands on it. That's just my idea of a turtle game and a pond game. And you would win the game by how many people collected fish. Now you can cut out fish and put them in the pond and each person, every time they land on a rock that has a fish, they get to take that fish and put, keep it until the end of the game and then they count how many fish they have and whoever has the most fish wins. That's one way to do it. There's lots of different ways to do that. So you put on your thinking caps and find out the best way that you can do this. I've got an idea. That's my prototype. Remember, that's my model. Now, how can you make your model even better? Hmm, test it a little bit, but I think I might, might want to improve it. Engineers test their inventions over and over again to find out how to make them better. 
how to make them so, boy, I really want to play that game now. You can learn a lot when your ideas don't work out, however. It's really, really important to realize that. Sometimes when you do something that's a failure or you think, oh, I don't want to use that idea again, it can actually turn out to be a success in a different way. I'll give you an example. One time, an engineer was supposed to make a really strong glue to hold together airplane parts. Her idea didn't work. She didn't, she tried and tried and tried, but she didn't get the glue to stick hard enough and things came up and these metal pieces came apart. However, she in the process found a different way to use that glue. And you'll recognize this. She used and made sticky notes. Do you know those yellow sticky notes? She found that the glue, the adhesive that she had made was perfect because you could put, put it together as sticky notes and then take off each piece, put it on something else, and it was removable. So it was perfect for making removable sticky notes, maybe not for putting pieces together for an airplane, but it worked for other things. Pretty cool. So just because something didn't work for this application, for this game, it may work for another game. So that's what engineering and science is all about. Trying, learning from what didn't work, trying again to find out what does work. Congratulations, make your game, play it. And what, what, when you complete your game, what do you want to do? What is it, what does it make you excited to do? Discover more things, discover ways you could change your game, play with other people, get their ideas. So they're still, even though your game is finished, there's a lot of things that you can be inspired to do as an engineer. Thank you, Daisy Engineers. Bye-bye.